can get started then. Um, so tonight is really one of my favorite things to teach in Revit. Um, it's how you guys can go in and start to build your own objects. And because this is an intro class, it's really simple objects. So I'm going to run through and just show you guys a quick example so you understand the concept of what we're about to do. Um, and then in addition to that, I'm going to show you guys how you can start doing some simple renderings while you're in Revit 2. I keep saying fruits of your labor, fruits of your labor. I think tonight we'll really show you guys what you can start doing. And if you like what you see tonight, you should really think about taking the next Revit class. Um, the next Revit class is all about taking the existing models that we've built in here and then really just adding more materials and more lighting to it. Um, and even at this point of your final project, the thing that's really cool is you can take exactly what you have without any materials and put it into a virtual reality set. So you guys, if you look at the final schedule, one of the last things that we do before we turn it in is we throw on some VR goggles and walk through. Tonight's kind of an added bonus cherry on top so that if you wanted to start adding some materials and things like that to see how it would render, um, you can do that. And you can start practicing it here in the lab, maybe. No, I don't see the plugin. There's usually something called the Inscape plugin, and that's what we use in the lab to start seeing 3D. Um, what I can do is email Jameson to see if he can get that reinstalled for us. I don't think, I didn't think anything had changed in here, but maybe it has. So either way. Um, so I'm starting in a completely blank template tonight. And again, this is going to be a little bit different because I'm just going to run through the process really, really simply, and then we're going to go ahead and do it together. Um, because I think this will be a fairly new concept for everybody. And really, when it comes to 3D modeling in Revit, we're pretty limited as to what we can do. We can basically do straight lines and curves, like really simple curves. But it's not going to be like anything that you would get in another program like 3D Studio or Maya, like the programs that people use to make um, 3D graphics. So we're taking architectural software and making it do something that other programs do better, but it's just enough so that we can do some of the modeling. Okay, so for example, to start this whole thing, it's going to be, I think, familiar with what you guys have done before. So for example, if you wanted a window or a sofa, you guys would go to component. So tonight we're going to go ahead and go to component, but we're going to do something a little bit different. When you are in model, or sorry, when you click on component, there's this little button over here to the right called model in place. Yep. Am I not projecting? Oh. Bless you for telling me. <laughs> Three minutes in. I'm glad somebody said something. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm recording, so in the other lab, if I'm recording, I'm projecting, and I forget in here, I have to do both separately. So, my bad. Okay. So there's that button, model in place. Typically, we just do load family, right? Now we're going to click on its next door neighbor. And when we click on model in place, the first thing it's asking us is, okay, what exactly are you building? So that if we were to plug it into one of those folders, it doesn't do that for you the way that we're doing it, but if we were going to, it wants to know what it falls under. So typically what I build is casework. So that would be any sort of like bookcase. And then the other thing I build is furniture. Um, you could even go generic under mass, but really you can pick any one of these things. I will go with furniture and I'm going to build a really simple table. And remember, this first bit is just me going really quickly to show you guys the concept of how you can build something and then we'll build something together. Okay? So, uh, where this is called furniture one, I'm going to call this table example. Very creative, I know. And right now, um, it there's really nothing in this menu that helps us. But if we go to create, this is where we want to be so that we can start creating what's called an extrusion. Okay? So again, going all the way back, the thing that should be familiar, we went to component. Instead of load family, we clicked on model in place. After that, this is the menu we ended up in. But remember, nothing in here really helps us. We want to go to create. 
If I could reach out to the people at Revit, I would say, hey, when we open up this menu, can you make it so that it automatically opens up and create? Okay, that doesn't really help us. So what we're really going to go over tonight is extrusion and void forms, but I want you guys to play with the others. The others, it's hard to do anything exact, but have fun making sculptural things, okay? You can't go wrong. Really just play with these things tonight, okay? See what you can get out of them. Let's start with extrusion. Now I have the weirdest references, so just bear with me. But you see that we have our typical sketching items over here. Okay, this is where we're gonna go into like Sesame Street mode for just a minute. Did anybody here watch Sesame Street? Few of you guys did, okay good. So the reason I was saying we're going into Sesame Street mode is I love those kinds of cartoons when I was little because it's all the imagination that came out of it, especially the cartooning. So we're gonna go into Sesame Street mode tonight. I want you guys have to imagine is that when I'm sketching, imagine that we're in a kid's program with them and we're sketching on the ground. So in extrusion, we have to work from this flat horizontal surface and we're just gonna bring it up, okay? So that's kind of what we're gonna to do. I can't make a wall top because it's on a vertical face. I can, but just not in this class. So in the next class, we can go beyond working from this point, okay? So everything we do is going to be put on the ground and then it's gonna come up. So the way that it works, you can sketch whatever you want, okay? You have an outline of it on the ground. Once you have that outline on the ground, because Revit is magic and because Sesame Street is magic, we tell it to extrude. And remember, to extrude something is to kind of claw it out. We tell it to extrude it from the horizontal surface. So if I were to take, you know, beat four title and tell it to extrude it up four feet, now I've got this big four foot box on the ground. And the thing that's a little bit nice is that kids have this big amount of solid chunky box. When I do my extrusion, I tell it where to start it, and I tell it where to end it. So by default, maybe on the menu right now, Rook, will you tell me on the left side of my, that left, yeah, left side of my menu, do you see extrusion start and stop? Or, I'm sorry, end and start under the properties? Oh, yeah. Do you guys see that? So under extrusion, you're telling it where to start. By default, it's a zero. So the ground is zero, and you're telling it how far up to come. If I, again, don't want that big chunky four foot box, I can tell it, okay, so if I want it four feet high, I can tell it to start at three ten and end at four feet. So if it starts at four ten, three ten and ends at four feet, how big is it now? Two inches, yep. If I want it to be a one inch chunky box that's four feet high, where should it start? Yeah, so we tell it to start at three and then end at four. So the extrusion, even though we have to work from this horizontal floor plane, it doesn't mean that everything has to be on the ground, okay? And when we're making a component, let me go back a step. When we started making this component, we decided to add an extrusion. The thing about these models is that each component can be made up of several extrusions. So what do I mean by that? Let's take, and let me even use these tables as an example. If I wanted to build a really simple table, pretend there's some depth to this, Oops, something like that. And you guys know that there's a leg beyond here too, right? Okay, think of this just in terms of individual parts and shapes. Extrusion wise, how many different shapes are here? There's five, right? There's four legs and there's one tabletop. So you can take several extrusions and turn them into one component. Even when you're an extrusion, because we know that Revit has like a copy and move mode, do I really need to build four legs if they're the exact same? No, I can build one and then copy them around the tabletop, okay? So let me show you real quick um, how that would work, and then we're gonna build that exact same table together. So with this, what I'll do is, um, I'm just gonna start with my rectangle, and I'm just gonna make skinny legs, like one inch by one inch. So let me just sketch this down here. I'm gonna make this one inch. I'm gonna make that one inch. 
and this is where my thin line, thick line helps me a lot. And you see how right now, how tall would my table leg be if I ended right now or accepted it the way it is? One foot. So this is like more of like a, hey, here's some breakfast in bed type table. So I want it to be a regular table like this. So I'm actually going to end it at, I'll say 28 inches. Okay, so two feet four. So it starts at zero and my table leg is gonna go up two feet four. And then once you're done sketching this one leg or this one component, what should I do when I'm done sketching? Check yep, green check mark. So this green check mark is there to help us, but I think more often it's there to haunt us because we forget to check it. After this, we're like, wait, where'd we go? Why is nothing happening? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the green check mark. And then after I finish that, do you see how I'm still in the component? It's waiting for me to finish the model. Before I'm done, I'm gonna hop into 3D and just take a look at it. Okay, so there's how my, my leg looks. And I know this is really subtle, but can you tell I'm still in edit mode because all of this is grayed out? Okay, and again, this is still waiting for you. Our architecture menu is still not here. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my first floor because that's where I'm building it. And this is going to be one of those like Ikea tables that's like five bucks that everybody has that's in like every DI, every garage sale. I think they're just a simple two by two, something like that. I don't even know. But I'm going to grab this. We're going to do two feet by two feet. Okay. And I think the legs are chunkier. Um, so this one, do you see how it's the same size? So I'm just gonna show you what would happen if I accepted it the way it was. I'm gonna go back to 3D. And essentially, I've got a leg, I've just got a giant cube, okay? So I'm gonna grab it again, and even from 3D, I can tell it this time, I want this to start at 2-4. So basically where the table legs end, and I want it to be two inches thick. Did that make sense what I did there? Okay, I'm gonna go back to my first floor, and right now I lost my leg. How can I see my leg again? We've run, we've run into this a couple times, not here, but other places. Wireframe. wireframe, well done, yep, wireframe. So on this guy, I'm gonna click on this. I want to make this um, like two and a half inches by two and a half inches now. Taking a look at my screen, how can I edit it? So when I don't have it selected, this is what my menu looks like. But when I click on it, what do you see? Mm -hmm. Good, really similar to our stairs, our roofs, our floors. First you grab that outline and then we can edit that outline. So I'm gonna grab this here and make it two and a half. I'm not gonna forget that zero. I'm gonna grab this line and also make this two and a half. Okay. So now that I know that these legs are right, I'm gonna use my CO copy command and I am just gonna copy these, whoops, or I'm gonna use my move command because my aim is off. And now that I've got all of these in here, I wanna look at it in 3D. Okay, those legs went extra chunky, but that's okay. And now that I'm done, I can finish the model. And if I go to my first floor, actually I can just go to 3D now. Here's what that looks like. Right? So this is just like the first part of how you can start building really simple things. And then in just a minute, we'll learn how to start applying materials on stuff. And part of applying materials onto things will be going into, it's gonna come full circle. When we look at these cabinets, like for example, if I wanted to do this fusion door style, as part of the downloads, you will see that they actually have materials in here somewhere railing. I'll have to find them. They have uh, essentially a JPEG. Oh, here we go. Materials and textures. And you can go 
and essentially apply any JPEG onto anything in Revit and make it a material or a texture. Okay, so let's start with that. Let me go ahead and scoot this out of the way. So before we get too far, let's go into our first floor and build some context. So I erase that and I'm just gonna start completely fresh. And so because we're gonna be doing some rendering and modeling tonight, let's build kind of like a mini stage so that when we set up our camera, we've got like some walls um, and surfaces. So grab a wall, any wall, I'm just gonna do the uh, basic and I'm just using what's already in here. I'm gonna send it up to the roof. I don't even know how high the roof is, but that's how high I'm sending it. And let's just make a 20 foot by 20 foot box. Um, but don't, but look at my screen real quick. Don't close all three sides. Oh my gosh, can you guys tell I had coffee today? I'm such a lightweight, I can't have coffee because this happens. Okay, so this is all we want. We're just kind of making a little stage. And I'm actually even going to throw in a floor. And remember, I didn't really change any of the parameters. I just kind of threw in my walls. The only parameter I changed was that it was going up to the roof, but I did generic walls and I'm also doing a generic floor. Okay. I think most people have that. I'm gonna throw one more thing at you guys. So the last thing that I'd like you to do is go ahead and place a camera and we'll probably all have to change this, but your camera, if you take a look at my screen, I want you to stand maybe just a few feet away from your room and then shoot it out the back. Okay, we're just going to have this view kind of set up so that when we have our furniture in here, we'll have this kind of nice little view of it. And in fact, I'm going to name this Furniture Front View. And then later I might even add, um, actually I'll do it right now, I'll do a side view too. And like I said, more likely than not, I will have to probably come back and edit the camera angles, but I just wanted to have them ready while we're here. So quick recap while you guys are finishing that up. We made a 20 foot by 20 foot three-sided room essentially. I threw in a floor just so we have a base to look at and then I added two camera views. I did a front view and then kind of a side view. All right, um, let me, so what I'd like to do, I'm gonna just write these up on the board so that um, if I lose you, we can easily find each other. So I'm gonna round these up and down. So I'm gonna say that this is gonna be 58 by 80. Okay. So our table that we're going to draw, 58 by 80, right? And then will you guys tell me the height of it? 29. 29, let's round that up to 30. All right, here are a couple other things that we need to decide on. How thick is our tabletop gonna be? Two inches, okay. And then how thick do the legs look? Let me come in and see. Those look like they're a little bit thicker, right? Would you guys say four inches, three and a half, something like that? What do you guys think? Three or four? 
Three? Okay. We'll do three inch legs. All right, so now a little bit of math. If we were looking at a side profile, this is, uh, we're gonna make these flush for now, just for our example, and then I want you guys to do a custom table, and then you guys have some extra credit, okay? <laughs> Sorry, Felicia, you already did this on your own. <laughs> okay, so over here, tell me, what is my extrusion start? So what's this down here, this for the tabletop? So tabletop start, where does it start? Three, three inches. So that's its stop point because it's oh. coming all the way up to 30. Oh, so, it's 20 inches. Mm -hmm. so it's going to start. I'm going to keep this in inches because it'll convert it for us. So start at 28 inches. And tell me what Revit is, will you guys remind me, is it start and end? Would be? Okay. I'm sorry if I'm getting the nomenclature backwards, but I'm pretty sure this is it. So we're going to start it at 28 here, and then we're going to end it at 30. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then for our table legs, do you see that these are going to start at zero? And where do they end? 28. So before you get started, just make like a quick sketch of those numbers, even if that sketch is in your head. You just need to remember where those numbers start and end. So this is what we're going for. Okay, so coming over here, we are going to go back to component, and then after I click on component, Felicia, where do we go next? You're one step ahead of me, almost. Yep, model in place. Okay, and then Jules, do you remember what this is asking? Why is this menu coming up? Yeah, it just wants to know like what category it's part of. And we're doing furniture, so I click on OK. And let's be specific. Let's call this the IKEA Storness. I'm probably saying that wrong, but I'm saying it phonetically so we can spell it. So Storness table. Okay, and then from here, Emily, is Revit nice and does it pull up the menu? Oh, sorry, not Emily. Let me go to Valerie. Valerie, is Revit nice? Does it pull up the menu that we need? No. It doesn't. Where should we start? Extrude. Yep. Good. Extrude. So now from here, um, Emily, what in here should be familiar for us? Bless you, Raquel. Yeah, the draw tools. So these are the same tools that we would use to draw stairs, roofs, any one of those other things. This time we're using it to draw extrusions. So let's decide. Um, in fact, I am going to have, oh my gosh, don't tell me your name. I know everybody's name. Ashley? Yes. Okay, Ashley. Should we start with table legs or tabletop? Legs. Okay, so we're going to start with legs. So for starting with legs, I like to grab the square. And we've got the dimensions here. They're going to be 3 inches by 3 inches. And while I'm putting this in, well, I'm going to be quiet for a sec. So I did 3 inches by 3 inches. And um, Caitlin, how, what else do I need to change over here in properties for my leg? Yeah, so I, I think that that's correct, but I don't know what you guys have. So just make sure that yours, your default is probably different. Okay, so again, extrusion start zero and end at two foot four. And I'm so sorry about the drilling. It's not fun. Okay, and then Raquel, once we've got this leg done, what do we need to do to kind of wrap it up? Yep, so green check mark. Now that I'm here, Brooke, let me ask you, are we completely done with this component and this extrusion? Okay. Yeah. No, we were just done with that one leg, right? So we're still in modeling mode. Um, so Brooke, I'm going to ask you again, um, what would you do next? Um, I would probably draw the tabletop. Okay. 
Good, okay. So let's do that. So our tabletop right behind me. So actually, let me do this. So Deshina, what should we do to keep going? Go back to create. Good, yep, we're gonna go back to the create menu. Good, and then right back here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do a rectangle. And you can put in the height of it either at the beginning or at the end. So until you hit that green check mark, you are still in edit mode. So you could do it at any time. So I'm just gonna start putting in my rectangle. And again, this is 80 inches. So zero space 80 by zero space 58. It didn't go exactly where I wanted it to go, but I'm gonna move that table leg in just a minute anyway. So that's okay. And then coming back around jewels, um, what do I need to change in my properties before I hit my green check mark? Mm -hmm. Yep, so for this one, we have decided that it's two inches high. So its start point is actually gonna be our 28 inches and its end point is going to be um, 30 inches. And then Valerie, how do I get out of here? Yep, green check. Good. Now, in case you guys can't see your table leg, how do we fix that? Yep, wireframe. So down here, just make sure you're in wireframe so you can see the two of them together. Okay, I'm just verifying a couple things. 80 inches, yep, 58. Okay, good. So after you have those, again, I'm using the copy um, command, and I'm not doing copy multiple, only because I'm grabbing all of them by such different points. So I'm really just doing them one at a time. And let me show you guys one other thing. I can also, once I have half of it done, I can grab both of them so remember, I'm holding the control key down right now to grab both. You'll see that little plus sign. And if I type in DM, that's this uh, mirror command right here, DM, I can find the middle, drag down, and it flips them over to the other side. I'll do that one more time. So select both of them, and to grab more than one item, you hold the control key down. You'll see a plus sign. Now they're both highlighted in blue. DM, wait to find that center point, that triangle right there. Draw a line down, and then as soon as you click, those will pop up. So before I get out of here, I'm gonna go into 3D and just see what this looks like. I should have actually, I made those 3D views and I didn't even use them. Okay, mine looks okay. How about you guys? Good. So if we think that we're good, just go ahead and hit that green um, check mark and we've got our first table. Did that work for you guys? Yeah? Let's make a quick edit to this, okay? And let's kind of think it through together. So let's go back to our first floor plan, okay? And if you want to come back and edit this, what you need to do is click on it. And do you see how this new button comes up called Edit in Place? That's what we're looking for. So we're gonna click on it and click on Edit in Place. And from here, what it, we can do is grab the individual component that we want to edit and change it from there. We can change the extrusion, okay? And here's what I want to do. I want to take the tabletop and I actually want to offset it a half inch so we have an overhang. Tell me how I would do that. Um, Valerie or Felicia, either one of you can be next. So if you guys know how to offset it, <laughs> 
All right. Yep. So you guys can type in OF or click on this shortcut key for offset. And what we want to do is we want it to be a numerical offset. And how far did I say we want to go? So two inches, so we do zero space two for two inches. And turn off copy, because if I keep copy on, what's gonna happen, let me show you what happens. When I offset, do you see how the original line is there? I don't want the original line in this case. So deselect copy, and then basically shoot it out, and it will um, fix the corners for you. Yeah, Emily? Oh, so is if you have, so click on the table first, and then right about here, you should see edit extrusion. Click on that and it should turn pink. Yep, that's what it was, the edit in place. I was, let me try to catch up with you. Okay, so click on your table, do edit in place, Okay, grab your tabletop, edit extrusion. Now is it pink? Okay, cool. Does anybody want to see the offset one more time? You guys got it? I think we ended up doing two inches. Whatever the offset is, just so you guys can practice. I wanted to go through the offset and also editing it after you've kind of closed out. And then after that, go ahead and finish your model for now. Let's take a look at what it looks like in our 3D views. Okay. So again, I think that this is really, really, really fun to do. Um, I wish that it was a little bit nicer when it came to working in the vertical plane and offsetting from the vertical plane, because really, I am frustrated that I can't make a clock and even like a coat rack like that really simply. Um, it doesn't quite work that way, but in the next class it will. So unfortunately not for this class, um, but we'll take what we can get. What I want to do now, that's really it when it comes to extrusions. Um, let's try one other thing. Let's go back to our first floor. And before we get too far, create something sculptural for me. So go back to component. Let me go back here. It's asking me to save. It'll probably be doing the same thing for you in just a minute. So while we're here, let's model something else in place. Call it furniture. But what I want you guys to do this time is go to create and play with these different shapes. Um, like the bend, the revolve, the sweep, and then we'll do one more together where we use the void forms. Um, and with these, the thing that's really nice about them is if you watch that quick little tutorial, it gives you an idea of what you'll be doing. So again, with the bend, you make one shape, you have another shape on top of it, you tell it where it goes, and then it kind of bends and blends the two shapes together. And then with revolve, it kind of goes in a different axis, uh, the, uh, the vertical plane. And so you sketch out the profile that you want. And then from there, it kind of sweeps it around whatever angle you want it to go. Okay, so with stuff like this, at least in this class, we don't have enough time to make it really like perfect and turn it into something um, like if you guys wanted to build like a fancy little vase or something like that. We don't have time to go through like all the different little minute components of it, but we have enough time just to play so that you can um, apply these things later. So play for just a minute and then what we'll do, we're going to also build maybe even that trash can so that we can do some cylindrical stuff that has a void. 
um, and then turn it into like a vase or something like that. And then we're going to get into how to apply material on it. You guys ready for the next one? Yeah? All right, so for this next one, I'm just gonna go through those same steps. Component, model in place, I'm still gonna call it furniture. And with this one, um, I know this is, I'm gonna skip past the trash can. Um, and let me do, I guess we could still do the trash can. That's fine. Let's actually, let's just call it a vase. It'll be the same concept as the trash can, but we're going to call it a vase. And again, we still need to sneak into the create tab. And we're still making an extrusion. And let me put some parameters up on the board again so we can kind of see what we're working with. We're essentially, essentially just making a cylindrical vase. Something like this. So really, it could still be a trash can if we wanted it to be, or it could be a tall vase. So what we'll do for our parameters is we will make it so that the um, diameter of this is eight inches. So it's gonna be out of eight inches, and then let's make it about the same height as our table. Let's make it about 32 inches tall. So it might be a little bit wobbly. Let's start with that, and then we'll make some changes to it after that. This would actually be a great place to put your um, umbrella. So the only thing that we're starting with right now, again, is an eight inch tube. So we're gonna change this to be four inches. So you can get the diameter of eight. And extrusion end, I put at 32 inches and extrusion start zero. Okay. And then once we have that part, we can go ahead and do our green check. And if we go into our 3D view, I don't think you'll be surprised. It really just is a solid tube. There's really not much to it. Now, the next part that we want to do um, is we want to go back to create, but this time we're going to do a void form. So a void form, instead of creating a component, you can see in this little video right here, it kinda, it takes out um, part of your solid. So let me show you real quick on my screen. I'm gonna click on uh, avoid extrusion and I'm still gonna do a circle. And for me, what I think I want to do is do an offset of a quarter inch. So 0.25 inches. And what I should be able, let me see if that didn't work for me. Let me do it like this. I'm gonna try to find the center point of this guy to come off of. Offset. Let's see if I can find it this way. Okay, so this one will be, it's not tricky to find, but typically, like if you're used to working in CAD, if you go around a circle, it finds the center for you but by default, it's not on. So what I needed to do, I right clicked and I went to snap overrides and I turned on centers. So again, typically that's on, but it wasn't this time. So I just needed to find that. And now once I found my center, when I click on it, I should be able to do, even a quarter inch offset looks a little bit thick, but I'm gonna come here. There's my quarter inch offset. 
Now my extrusion start, I don't want a hole in the bottom, right? So if I started at zero, this is gonna have, like anybody's gonna see this, but still. So I don't want to start it at zero where it's gonna be a hole. I actually want to start it at a quarter inch and then take it up half. So maybe I'll take it up to 34 inches. So as long as I'm coming up through, it's going to put a hole in it. So 0.25. And then again, even two foot nine is fine here. And let me show you real quick what it looked like, looks like, let's make sure it worked. And then if it did, we'll run through it together. Yep, so you can see when I kind of highlight over it, do you see how I still have a base and there's definitely an opening in the top? So let me go back to the first floor plan. There's a couple new steps in here. So I'm gonna do undo on that. Okay, and now I'm back here just trying to put in the void. So in case you lost me anywhere here, what I did is um, I was, uh, I selected the circle and I'm back to the point where I can't find the center. What simple thing can I do with my mouse to find that again? Good. Right click, snap override, centers. And now it'll find the center of my circle. So in the AutoCAD Revit world, center and midpoint are different. So midpoint is for a line and center is the midpoint of a circle or an arc. That's why it wasn't turning on. And then up here under offset, I put that as a quarter inch so that that way when I draw you can see that it's starting to snap at quarter inch increments and I just want it to be right there. Oh, is it snapping a quarter or am I just making, oh I'm so sorry I thought it was snapping but it isn't. Let me go back here to the actual offset. Okay, I'm so sorry. The first time I did this, I was under the assumption that when I was doing the offset, it was working. Let me look one more time. Three and three quarter. Okay, no, it is. All right, three and three quarter and a half. There you go. All right. And remember your extrusion start, bring it up off the ground a quarter inch too, so it's got the same thickness. And then just make sure your extrusion end goes out the top. So however far up you want to come. And then go ahead and finish that model up. Take a peek at it in 3D. Then one of the ways that you can check is if you uh, change it to shaded colors you should really be able to see the inside and outside. Did that work for you guys? Yeah. Emily, Ashley, yes, no? Where did I lose ya? So um, when, what I did is I, when I was still here, so you can see in my model, like right here, do you see how I can actually hover over and find that void form? So while I was still editing the cylinder, I created a void form. So I had my cylinder, and then again, while I'm in here, I also created a void form. So void extrusion, and then I just made another circle. I did all of this in floor plan. It would be too hard for me to do in 3D. And even here, um, if I wanted to, I could really just freehand it because this isn't really like a, a component that will be built. Again, as long as it comes over the top, oops. Redo that void form again. Okay. So 
So extrusion start quarter inch, extrusion end. I'm just going to come out the top a little bit. There's my void orb. Yeah. So with the mine, I did you see that I went through it a couple of rounds? And I'll show you one more time because here, let me go back to edit and place and just get rid of this avoid form. Um, when I went to the cylinder, I noticed that the first time I did it, it did it just fine. But the second time, it definitely was not working. So let me try it one more time. So here. So we're just clicking anywhere in the center. Yep, so from here, do you see that when I click on the um, the original circle, yes. it's offsetting it f uh, a quarter inch to the outside? Okay. This is where I have to be careful because I want to come to the inside. So there's the, the inside point. So it's a really subtle movement, but you can feel it kind of snap to that place. I kept trying, I kept thinking I was good. Trying to do it. Like you can see the circle in the center kind of comes up, but then it Oh, yeah. So I kept trying to find that. I didn't realize I could just click on Yep, so it. once you have found it, it's already anchored on, and then from there you go back to the outside and start pulling it in the direction that you want to offset. Okay. So there's that. I'm going to finish that one. And really from there, those are the tools that you need to create really basic furniture components and even like sculptural components. So don't forget that there is um, an extra credit portion where you can submit anything that you build um, like this and send it to Jameson to do some 3D prints. He, so he, I think Felicia, you still have sent him something. He said last week that he still hadn't printed it. They're doing some big 3D build for a conference, and I thought that that was done, but I think the conference is this week. So he's like, I'll do it before the end of the semester, which doesn't know when. It's like, I trust you. There's not too many of us, so I know he'll get to us. But if you did want to see how this looks in 3D form, like some of the furniture pieces that I brought in um, last week, that would be uh, kind of a fun option to see something tangible that you get out of this class. Um, so that's it as far as the extrusions, but now what I want to do is show you guys how to start applying um, and rendering. So this is kind of the second part of the lecture. So if you're watching at home or if you just want to skip to this part, just know that this starts at 49 minutes in. So um, our extrusion lecture was about 48 minutes long and then at the 49th minute is where we start doing materials. So for the materials, what I want to do is just show you guys how to render it exactly like it is. And then we're gonna start putting some of our own materials on here. So to start us off, please go to your front view of your furniture plan. So something like this. And then after you get here, go ahead and click on view. And do you guys see this little button right here? That's our render button. Go ahead and click on that and you should get another menu that pops up. Okay. And if yours is missing, let me know. I have to turn off my screen so you can find it. Is anybody's little render one missing? Go 
go ahead and just click on render and you'll see this other little rendering thing come up. And this just shows you what this would look like out of the box if you were to hit your render button. Okay, so not too exciting. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool, it's a little exciting. It shows you what the shadows would look like and the textures. We don't really have any textures. We don't have any different things here. Let's change just a couple things, okay? Again, just with what we have out of the box. Change your setting from draft to medium, okay? And then go ahead and do, keep it exterior and sun only. Um, and under adjust exposure, click on that. And this is really confusing. To make it brighter, you actually have to go to the left, which I think is counterintuitive. Go down to like 12 for me, and you'll be surprised at how much brighter it gets. Okay, after you do that, go ahead and click on render again. It's gonna take a little bit longer because we added a little bit more light and we upped the quality of it to medium. Did yours get a lot brighter? At least in my angle where the cylinder is, that thing's just like highlighted, like pretty crazy. So that's really the very basic way to get us started. You click that button, that's what you get. But now let's start having some fun with some materials that might actually exist in Revit. So let's close out of this. And then as soon as you click off of it, this should go back to normal, okay? And you can add materials in 3D view, or you could even add it in um, your floor plan view. So let's start with our table here, okay? So with our table, let's go ahead and go back to edit in place. Actually, let me... I'm gonna check one other place to see if we can just put it on once. I don't think we can. No, unfortunately. Okay, we're gonna go back to edit in place. And first let's grab our tabletop. Okay. And do you see how under our properties there is a material option right here? So from here, click in and you'll see that three little dot, dot, dot pop up again. Now there's not a ton in here, but there's some. So if you wanted, like for example, if you knew that you wanted some kind of stone, you could type in stone up here. And there's concrete, not very exciting. Um, let me try, let's see if there's any marble. There's no marble. Oh, let me try one other. There's really, there's aluminum. I can try an aluminum. Let's see how that goes. I'm wondering. Okay, so apparently there's updates on these. I will just leave it um, as it is, but I'm gonna put an aluminum top, okay? And then on my legs, I have to grab all of them, unfortunately. So I'm gonna grab all four. I'm gonna make those something else. So with this, really grab anything that's here. I'm gonna make mine brick. I know it makes no sense, but I can and I will, <laughs> okay? Grab any materials that you want. And then after you've applied the material, you can finish your model. And I like to always do it in this front view Go ahead and go back to view and click on your teapot and see what it looks like now. What did you pick? Mm -hmm. It's cool. I can do it. <laughs> um, I know, right? It makes no sense, but like I said, I can, so I did. Did that work for everybody? Yeah? Emily? Yeah. It 
So over here, it, so are you in a, like a 3D view like this? There you go. Now, d is it letting you render? Okay, good. So let's do one other thing. Let's all hop online. And this is ridiculous, but bear with me. Just look up leopard print and go to images. Turn on your safe search. People are weird. <laughs> okay. And really grab any one of these. Um, depending on the resolution or the size of the image, mine will look different than yours. But just grab one. We're just kind of doing this for fun. I'm going to grab this one right here that's like a thousand by a thousand. But really pick any of them. Actually, maybe I'll do this one right here. And what I want you to do, save the image as, but please know where you're saving it so that we can find it. I'm just putting mine in my Revit folder and I'm calling it leopard print. Oh, weird. I've never Googled myself before. I was trying to see if any photos of myself would come up. These are things that I did a really long time ago. Okay, never mind. We're done with that. That was awkward. <laughs> um, so now that we've got our leopard print, this is really like way beyond what I should be showing you, but we're here and I think it's fun. And if you can make a leopard print material, you can put your face on stuff. I mean, why not? You'll, I mean, this is really fun, but you could actually make like a little picture frame on a wall and put somebody's family picture on it. Um, as long as the proportions are right. And yeah, I don't know why you would, but why not? It's fun. So <laughs> from here, what we're gonna do, meet me back in, um, we could do it here wherever, but we just need to edit the table again. And we're gonna make a leopard print tabletop. I know we should be doing like wood or something, but this will really drive the point home and you guys will remember that day you made a leopard print table. So from here, we're gonna do that same thing, but we're gonna go to our material and there's two ways that you can do this, okay? So let me give you guys like a quick rundown of how this works. If you look at copper versus concrete, they will have what's called different rendering um, appearances. So if you look at, if you think about um, the way light hits something, if light hits copper versus concrete, which one will look like shinier and brighter? Copper, copper right? Where concrete is going to be a little bit more dull. Is there carpet on here too? Yeah, there's carpet too. So carpet will be even more dull. So the reason why I like you guys to remember that, you can come here and create a new material, or if you duplicate a selected material, it's going to copy all of those render qualities. And that will give us a shortcut, because this isn't the render class, to at least quickly grab something that has those same material qualities. So if you want something to be shiny, grab something that's already shiny. If you wanna make something that's really flat and matte, grab something that's already flat and matte and copy that stuff. So that's my shortcut for you guys, okay? So for our um, leopard print table, I want to make it kind of high gloss. So I'm going to grab something that has like a high gloss look to it. Even like this iron here, do you see that light that's hitting it? You can kind of see just by its preview how it's catching the light. So grab any one of these things. And then do you see this circle with the plus sign down here? What we want to do is duplicate selected material. And I'm gonna call it leopard. Everybody still with me? Okay. Now, there's only one thing that we um, need to change here. And it's gonna take, I always fumble to find it. Please don't fumble, please don't fumble, Naima. Okay, graphics. I always think it's in graphics, but it's, it isn't. I need to find where I can upload a JPEG.
Here we go, image. Yay, I didn't fumble too much. So under appearance, do you see where it says image? And it says no image selected. Click on that and find that leopard print that you just saved. Oh, is it under, so under appearance, under generic? Did you guys duplicate iron or something different? It should, so let me click on one other thing. So like even under, I'm, everything I click on says appearance and image. And, Yeah. Are you guys seeing something that's already in, like, uh, are you guys using something that already has an image in it? Yeah. So I'm just trying to catch up with these ladies first. Okay, so let me go back to mine. Let me go back to Leopard. Sorry, let me find it in here. Because it'll be the same uh, no matter where I click. So up here, do you see that I've clicked on appearance? Okay. And then do you guys have information and then generic? What does yours say under appearance? This one is clean and metal. Mm -hmm. If I do it on okay. metal, it doesn't work. But if I do it on metal, it Interesting. Okay. So I'm, I'm sorry. I was I thought that all of these would be similar and enough to where you could upload an image. Um, what did you start with, Felicia? Chrome. Let me go up. I'm just going to play with this. Steel polish. Let me try to find one. of. Okay, so steel. I'm going to do chrome plated. Yeah, you're right. This one doesn't have an option to put an image onto it. So um, maybe this is a good thing to see now. When you're clicking through, make sure that whatever you're duplicating will let you add an image to it. Um, and then if not, you can just start with a generic one. Um, but I always like to have kind of a, a base point to start with. Okay. So with mine too, so right now I have my leopard print in there. I'm going to click apply. Let me make sure under color. I'm going to keep it like this for now. I'm going to see when I render it if it pops up because I want to make sure that this image um, pops up when I render it. So let me practice this real quick. Let me finish it. Hopefully it works. And then if not, I'll go back and um, troubleshoot. Let me go to my teapot. I feel like I need a big drum roll because I'm afraid it's going to be gray. We'll see how it works. Oh, and it's still gray. So I have to override. Worst case scenario, I will make a new one so that I don't have to override anything and it will just be the leopard print. Um, did anybody get their image to show through or did you guys get overridden? You got yours. What did you pick as a base, Caitlin? Okay, let me back up. Under your image fade, mine was set to zero. But as you turn it up, do you see that my image is starting to come through? And at 100%, that's all you see. So with the material I chose, that fixed it. Felicia, did that fix yours? Everybody got your leopard coming through? Brooke, any luck? Okay, good. So now I'm going to finish the model. Go back to my render view, and I'm going to hit the teapot one more time. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm going to patent this, guys. You can't take it from me. <laughs> oh, no, that's pretty funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay. So that's really the most simple way for me to explain to you guys how to render something in just one class. So this is a preview of an entire class.
in an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> I just kind of ran through it really quickly. Um, so again, for your final project, you don't really have to do anything like this. There is that extra credit component. But when you're making your 3D views, if you want to go into the render teapot, some of the things that you're downloading might already have materials built into them. So you might just want to take a peek to see how it looks as you're working. Um, I even had last year people went in and added paint on the walls and even added materials on the floor. Um, let me see if I can kind of go to my first floor. I added a floor. There we go. That was on the wrong side. So even on your floor, um, I'm going to come in here and try to add something to it as well. Structure. Okay, I'm going to do that same thing. I'm adding a leopard print floor, and I did that in my structure. I have no idea how this is going to go, but again, I figure we're here tonight, so why not? Here's my teapot. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that's really gross. <laughs> but those are the kind of things that you can do. So while I'm here, let me point out a couple things in the floor. Do you guys see how it's kind of obvious that I took a square pattern and it's being repeated? So in the future, um, again, I don't know how many of you guys are going to go on to the next class or not. But in the future, if you guys do choose to put some type of a pattern on, you can look online for something called a seamless pattern or a seamless texture, and they make it so that you can't see the squares. I will say that those are really hard to find now without having to pay for them, unfortunately. Like people typically um, charge for them now, but there are. Um, some places that still have really good um, uh, seamless textures. What I'm gonna do here is it's setting it to be a foot by a foot. I'm gonna make this be five feet by five feet. Oh, this is weird, it's doing it. Oh, will it let me make it five feet? There you go. So it actually thinks in inches in this menu. Let me see what that did. So again, seamless textures help. Um, and then really the last thing to go, do you see how those squares got bigger now? So with these, it's, it's really hit and miss, especially because we're working with like a whole bunch of free stuff. Um, but it could end up looking like really awesome. It could end up looking like a leopard floor that's been tiled by squares. I don't know. It's just, you'll just, you're just going to have to see what you get. Um, but once you have a view that you like, let's say I love this, there's two things you can do. And this is important to remember. If you want to place it on a sheet, you save it to the project. Okay. And when you save it to the project, so I'm going to call this front view leopard. Okay. Now a new view category is created down here. Do you see how now I have a renderings menu? So if I double click on this, this is just an image of that rendering that I made. So new category was started. Let me go back. I think I was wherever I was. Let me go back to render. But if you wanted to export this to like give to a client or add it to your portfolio in like InDesign or something like that, you could also export it, and there's these options here, JPEG, all of these things. Now, right now, it's not the best quality because it's a draft, and it's only set to, it was only set at 96 DPI, but you could really bump this up to like 300 dots per inch and play with that a little bit more. And then again, export, I'm just going to save that. So now it's in here. 
and I should have saved a folder and put my renderings in here. So do you guys see that there's a difference when you render saving it for the project versus saving it to export out? Okay, so save to project again, it's a, essentially a JPEG, but it's a view that you can drag and drop onto a sheet. To get the sheet out of Revit, you always need a PDF, right? So you don't have to drag and drop it onto a sheet in order to get the image. You can just export it straight from here. Okay? So those are the two ways to get it out of there. Um, now with that, let's take a look. All right. So with this catalog, just like the Kohler catalog or anything else, I personally think that it can get a little bit overwhelming because especially with this it's hard to know what you're looking for cabinet base cabinet base I mean how many cabinet bases can there be so where I personally like to start is I like to download the PDF spec book just so that I can start at least learning the names of some of the things and getting comfortable with them now the other thing that you could do if you wanted is just to jump right in and start downloading stuff if you wanted to. After I logged in, it kind of kicked me out from where I was, so now I'm finally back here. And you again, you can click on any of them, and I just want to download the spec book. And I'll quickly go through the spec book so you guys can get an idea of what's in here. Um, and maybe start getting comfortable with some of the names and the different sizes that it comes with. So the main categories would be the wall cabinets, base cabinets, tall cabinets. They do have some vanities, office cabinets, and decorative things, but really we're gonna be focusing on um, the wall and base cabinets. Let me start with the base, and then we can build up from there. So let me jump down to about E1. Okay, and from here, you can start seeing some of the different base cabinets that they have. And you'll notice that a lot of them will be really similar to the next one, but the changes that you'll see will be in, you know, like the drawer pull pullouts and things like that. Um, the doors, whether they swing on a hinge, um, lots of different options here. But really the thing to remember, the most important thing is this is going to be a Revit model, and I don't necessarily know if you're going to be showing all of those different things. So for me, as long as I get, you know, the right dimension, um, I think it'll work out for you. Now, one thing to be careful of, um, last semester, uh, sorry, two semesters ago, when we were working on this, I had students that could not get the base blind corner cabinets to work. And so what they ended up doing is essentially just having a dead space. So instead of having a corner cabinet here, they would just make it look like, you know, two regular cabinets came together and they just put a note that it was a quarter, uh, corner cabinet. But if you want, try it, maybe see if it's working um, now. I don't know what was going on, but that was just something that we couldn't fix in the time that we had. But you can see that there are also, you know, appliance cabinets if you wanted to insert like a little microwave or even dishwashers in there. Sometimes they have these um, things here. Now remember, not everything will have a Revit model, but this will at least allow you to start seeing some of the different options for the base cabinets. Okay, I hope I'm not making you dizzy with this. So coming back over here, there are some of those accessories that we went over, but really what I'm looking for is there's cabinet base, and then we've got, you know, the deep sink, the double door, and then all of these things like the FH, um, four drawer, all of those things will be inside that catalog that I just showed you, that PDF spec book. So why don't we start out um, and grab 
this base combination four drawer. I think it's the second cabinet, so it's not the blind corner, but let's do the four drawer. And let's also go ahead and download the materials and textures from here as well. Uh, I am on BIM object, so let me, are you completely lost? Okay, so from BIM object, what I did, let me close out of here real quick. If you click on download on any one of these cabinets, that menu pops up for you. So again, what I grabbed, um, Valerie, materials and textures, and then the first or second base cabinet, let me go back, cabinet. So the second cabinet base, combination four drawer, that's one that I got. Yeah, I don't even know what I clicked on. Yeah. Emily? Yes, and I just logged in. There's You can use Google, Facebook, whatever you want. And I think the night that we did our furniture, I think everybody got one. So you might just be able to go back to that one, whatever you may have used. But let's do this. Because we're on PCs, let's go to our materials and make sure that these are, how do you do it here, extracted. Or um, Revit won't be able to see them. So now mine are in download slash materials, and I'm actually just going to throw it into my Revit folder, just so they're all in the same place. You can keep yours in your downloads for now, but just make sure it's extracted. If you have a Revit folder that you've created on your desktop. No, nope, not at all. Uh -uh. And then just to show you guys, right here, this company is actually giving you guys, um, bless you, material samples of what they have available. Okay. If there is something else, another texture that your client wants to do, you can download that and apply it just like we did, right? Because really, this is such a good resource in that we actually have 3D cabinets that we can model. I spent months trying to find something and this is the only thing I can find. And so this might not be um, what you end up using with your client, but it could just be something good to use while you're in Revit, okay? So we'll use just one of the ones that they give us and you guys can make them leopard print if you want. These are just some materials that are available to you. So let's do this. Did everybody get a chance to download the materials and extract them and grab that base cabinet? Yeah? Okay. So now that you have that, open up that base cabinet. You might Mine needs to be upgraded, so I'm sure yours will too. And go ahead and do the load into project and close. We're just going to bring it into the same little space here. Everybody got that imported okay? All right. No, Brooke, I'm being nosy. Did you actually see yours pop up in your rendering? Is that the white thing in the back? Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Cool. It's just rendered. It's not rendered. Oh, that's just the shaded view. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's do this. Um, what we're going to do now is now that we're in here, I want to go to edit type.
And under materials and finishes, do you see that it's already um, assigned the white laminate to it? Let's do this. Let's double click on those three dots. And this doesn't necessarily exist yet. At least I don't think it's smart enough to find it. Let me see if it can. So under appearance, plastic solid, graphics. Yeah, huh? Yep. Oh, sorry, not the finish. Let me go back. I did the the drawer, the door drawer material or the cabinet material, either one of those. And what I want to do is under the appearance, I don't want it to be just the plastic white. I want to go ahead and add the image to it. So from here, color, Now I'm back to where some of you guys were with your Chrome, where there wasn't a place to add an image. Let me go through in our, um, I think that this is for a contractor. I don't think this is for us. No. Let me come back over here. What we might end up needing to do, I wish I could use this one right here, um, is to create a new material and essentially assign one of those images to it. But give me just a moment to poke around and I'm gonna see if I can't apply an image or... <laughs> okay, so now I'll do it in slow motion. So under color, image, thank you Daishina for saving my brain. <laughs> So now it's looking for an image. I went to materials. And again, these are all of the materials that um, they had available. And I want to see thumbnails. So I'm gonna do this hazelnut. Do whichever one you want. I'm gonna click on okay. And before I get out of here, I, I think that since I changed this one, so I did something bad here. I changed the Millerae, Millerot, I need to call them to figure out how to say their name. I changed the white to a different texture. So if I was doing this cor cor uh, correctly, I should have duplicated this and called it hazelnut. Does that make sense? Because I just overrode their standard. So let me just keep this one the hazelnut I'll leave the white for now, but I know that I can go back and fix it. There we go, fixed. Okay, and now I broke the hazelnut. Oh, come on. From here, image. So H and V means horizontal or vertical. So how is the grain running? So I want it to run horizontally, I think. I think that'll look better, we'll see. And here, I'm gonna change it to uh, realistic. And you can see it already starting to appear. Um, do you see that the toe kick still needs to be updated? So the toe kick, if I go back to um, edit type, oops. The toe kick is still raw particle board. And I want it to be It's awful, I don't even remember what I called it. Let me search for it. I know I put hazelnut in the name. There you go, it's under laminate. And I'm gonna try to render it to see how that looks.
right? So I have a base cabinet, but what don't I have? My countertop, right? So what I would do in this situation is I'd get all the base cabinets I wanted, and then I would actually extrude my own countertop. And the reason why I like extruding my own countertop is if you guys have worked with the one that's built into Revit, it automatically has a backsplash attached to it. I don't love that look. I'm kind of a modernist. Um, but if you want to use the, you know, the countertop Revit has, you can just use that. But I think it's just as easy to extrude it. And then you can really specify the thickness and make it a little bit more custom. And again, put whatever material you want on it. So this is the super quick preview. Um, I would say play around a little bit more in this catalog and maybe extruding some stuff so that if questions come up, what I'm hoping again, since I'm not planning on meeting on Thursday still, I would like you guys to spend some time playing so that if you run into something, we'll have time hopefully in lab to answer it. Um, but then if not, like I said, Tomorrow night is a little bit crazy to send questions. Thursday night's gonna be a little bit better or we can um, reconvene Tuesday or even over the weekend if something comes up. Please feel free to reach out. Yeah. It, I would, you'd probably have to, so just like um, a floor, when you do an extruded object, so pretend I'm in that pink mode, right? You don't have to draw something like this and keep it like that. You can come in and cut all the circles you want and it'll extrude that without a void form. So the void form is just if you're coming in and um, you want to like put a hole in something that's solid. So with this one, because we want the hole to go all the way through, you can just draw it like that where the sink would go and it would extrude it like that without a voided form. Um, if you don't put in a hole for the sink, if you pull in a sink, I think you'd see the countertop go right over it. Yeah, I so, yeah. so what you could probably do, I'd probably draw the counter solid, place your sink, and then once the sink is in there, because you're modeling it in place, you can just, I would say, trace over where the sink would go. And I think that that should work. That's how I would do it. Okay. So for me, this is the part of Revit that I love. Um, when I got into architecture and interior design, it was really because I loved building things and being in physical spaces. But sadly, I spend most of my time on a computer. Um, I don't spend that much time in the built environment. So to me, this is as close as it can get. So whatever I can do, digitally to kind of show that built environment. Um, I love it so much. And I wish that, let me see real quick. Does anybody see a button over here called Enscape or no? No Enscape buttons for you guys? Okay, I'm gonna get that on here because Enscape is really cool. It essentially shows your model rendered the whole time. So you know how we just rendered it with the teapot, but once we click on it, it goes away. With Enscape, it makes it so it just stays rendered, and it really shows you a preview of what it looks like if you were going to do a, a VR walkthrough with your client. It's really fun to use. I don't know why they're not on here. Unfortunately, David, our lab tech, is gone all this week and next week, but I'll see if Jameson can get it back onto our computer so that if you guys want to play with it, you can. And again, the Enscape part is not required. It's just really cool to see it rendered and like turning around the room. So I think it's pretty fun. Okay. Let me do it. I'll do it with the leopard print again. So the question is how to change the scale of a pattern. And on my floor, I applied a pattern to it. And as you guys saw, I thought that it was tiled way too small. I wanted the leopard print to be a little bit bigger. And so wherever you are so in this menu I might have to do it a couple times Jules because I don't know if it's going to be the same in every menu so let me do it here first in the floor it's going to be different than when you're in the actual material menu so let me start here and show you it here but under leopard <clears throat> oh you know it'll get you to the same place so it should be okay 
So let me come here under the appearance is where I think I did it. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. Click on the image. Okay. Once you've clicked on the image, you should see the scale here. And you can even unbreak this if you want it, you know, to stretch it out some way you can. But this is the one place where it thinks in inches and not feet. So if you type in five and then tab, do you see how it's inches? Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to make this really big, like if I did, sorry, let me do like 12 feet by 12 feet. Mm -hmm. So it just looks like a giant rug or something. By the way, this is how you can make a rug. If you take a rectangle and extrude it like an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch, you can put an image of a rug on top of it. And so that will actually render a rug for you or a carpet. Okay, so short answer to your question. When you are in your texture under appearance, click on the JPEG and those options will come up. Now the thing to remember though, this is the leopard pattern for everything. So I'm pretty sure my table is going to change now too. Yep, see how my table has a huge leopard pattern on it? If you didn't want your table to change, just duplicate that le leopard material or whatever and call it like leopard small, leopard big, whatever may work for you. Any other questions that you guys might want to get on the recording? Yeah, Emily. So when I was done with it, mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of wait for it to hit a tab and then it go up to the cube and not whatever is missing. What would I change then? It's saying hazel. Okay. If it says hazelnut is missing, it means the file isn't on your computer. Okay. Did you extract it? Try extracting it one more time. That's So I forget that on a PC you actually have to extract the folder before it'll see the files. Um, and it might go so far as to let you attach it, but once it goes to render, I think when a file is in a zip folder, it's essentially still locked. So it might just be locking you out. Okay, I bet that's what's going on. Because your leopard floor worked, right? Okay, yeah, I think you just need to extract it. So um, on that folder that has the little zipper on it, I still have it. You know what, mine isn't like that anymore. Right click on the folder. Here's one. So if you right click, do you see where it says extract all? Just go to there. And then it'll, it will no longer have that zipper on it. Hey, anything else before I post this and you guys play? Yeah, Brooke? Um, I rendered it in the Ruby Cube, mm -hmm. like the main one, and I still kind of You're stuck on a frame? Let's see. What do you mean by that? Um, so I can so see. So this is what the frame was mm -hmm. indented when I read it. Yeah. Um, and now I can't, like, get back to it. Now, are you sure you're in the 3D view? It looks like you're in the picture of it. So click over, like, in your project browser, make sure you're in 3D. Double click on that. You're in 3D. Weird, you might be glitching. So this. And I can't like change the wireframe or like see that thing. Weird. It's only in the top, the other one. Are these grayed out up here? Yeah. Okay, let me try to catch up with you. So you were in render. Where is this render menu? Try to go back to view. Can you even click on view anymore? Um, no. Everything's grayed out? Is there oh, anything no. that's green? Click on the teapot. Let's just see what happens. And then, did that work? Are you out of it now? That's so weird that you'd. Okay, so that's weird that it wouldn't just let you click off and be like unstuck. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, this is.